I'm going to go ahead and start again with just a short little run through of the overview of what we've been working on, as well as uh, the different uh, kind of outlines the different phases and where we are in this project. And then we'll show some examples of how some of this can be done and some of the new ways of doing things. So uh, good to see a number of faces on here. I'm looking forward to seeing many of you in Summit next week in Chicago. And hopefully we'll get, if any if people have questions, hopefully we'll get through all of those in this time. So I don't think we'll need a full hour, but um, we're happy to stay on, Mike and I, as long as needed to answer questions and uh, make sure everybody's in a good place. So I'm going to start sharing my screen here. And so welcome to the Finance Roundtable. Um, just going to do a quick kind of overview. Um, if you, if we haven't met, my name is Chris Dolan and I'm the head of product and joined, I'm joined here by Mike Smith, who wears a lot of hats here at Touchpoint. Um, I made this title up. It's not as official, but he, he is kind of our finance guru and, and, uh, but he, he does a lot of things and everybody loves Mike. Um, so, uh, thank you, Mike, for joining me today. And um, before I kind of get into the various phases, I just wanted to start with the overall goals of this project. And I think you'll see, um, or if you're if you're not in alignment, I think hopefully at the end of this call, you'll be in agreement that these goals are what are being accomplished by what we're doing here. Um, and so change is difficult. I recognize that there's going to be some things that are different. But once I point out where those differences are um, and how it, it should be much easier than anything you've done in the past for, in terms of using any of the finance and reconciliation tools. So those goals are to provide an easier UI UX, um, to separate out pledge management into a new area. There's some new features that came with this, including soft credits, registration credits, better bank check scanning, and the ability to uh, manage non-contributions in bundles, batches. We want to simplify the reconciliation. So that's where we're going to be spending a lot of our time on this call and talking through how this phase two did that. And then lastly, this is the last phase of it, but it's combining contributions and transactions for easier reporting. And so those are the overarching goals. We've done everything except for this last part of it that is in the works now. Um, and so this project was broken up into three different phases. Phase one, um, standardized account codes. So if you're not familiar with that, I'm not going to cover that because I've covered that on a previous uh, roundtable and webinar. But if you want me to cover that at the end, I'm happy to answer any questions around account codes. Uh, there's a new batch search page. Again, I'm not going to get into details on these. I'm mostly going to focus on phase two. Um, but the new batch search page is part of what makes the reconciliation so much easier. And I'll show you that. The new batch entry page, particularly around registration credit, bank check scanning, non-contributions, all of that hopefully you're very familiar with. It's been out on everybody's system for about six weeks now for phase one. And then new pledge management. Uh, phase two is what rolled out about two weeks ago. And that's what we're going to be focusing on today. And this is where all online transactions now are in batches. So this includes event registration payments, any kind of mission trip stuff that was already in there, but in, in addition to online giving. Um, the next piece of this is that um, those transactions, when they occur, are going to show in a pending batch until they're settled. And the goal of that is so that uh, now your batches will match your the settlements report so it's easier to reconcile. And I'll show you what that looks like, what that means. So batches are going to be uh, organized by the settlement or the deposit date uh, based on your various processor. Uh, those could show up in your bank maybe a day or two later than um, but that's, that's the idea. It should be, they should match your deposits in your bank now. Uh, soft credits was one of the features we rolled out in phase two. Happy to answer any questions on that or talk through that. We probably won't go into super depth on that, but if anybody has questions, happy to talk through that. So, and then we reworked the way fund sets. This is just an added benefit to make fund set reporting easier uh, we know this is a great tool. Uh, it should be, it, 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 you know, there's a lot of places where you can run reports based on fund set and now managing those fund sets uh, is easier. And so um, that is kind of the overview of phase two. Phase three is what is coming later. This is where the contributions and transaction reports will be re combined into one for simplified reporting. 
um, and you know some other things that we'll talk about in, when that gets closer. So easier reconciliation. Um, this this really is reconciliation. We realize is several different parts, right? There's reconciling the monies that you have received from your processor and that get deposited in your bank account with Touchpoint, and then there's reconciling the actual gifts with your general ledger. And so there's both of those sides to it. And I'm going to actually show you uh, on a database um, kind of how that can easily be done now. So um, let me hop over to a database and I'm going to pull up the new batch uh, page. So I'm going to go here to finance and I'm going to go to batches. And I'm going to filter here just by a date range um, and see online. And so in this database, what you're seeing here um, is that there are some pending uh, items that have happened that have not processed. Those are now in a pending batch. And you have all of these batches that have settled and have various um, amounts and numbers in them. You'll have generally two per day, one for bank card and ACH. This is a demo database. So we did have to somewhat kind of simulate what this would look like. Um, but they should, each of your batches should have a batch reference ID, should have a source, whether they're bank card or ACH, uh, the, and it should have a settlement or deposit date on them. Uh, you can choose uh, based on a setting. There is a setting over in the admin settings, whether those um, are going to close or whether they're going to be open for you to be able to look and, and then close them later. So there's a setting here called auto close online batches now that will close those if you want on a nightly basis. Um, but this is what this page should look like. Um, again, because this is a demo database, I cannot sh fully show you this, but if you look at your batches and sort it similar to how I'm doing right here, and then you go to your settlements report, the settlements report, which in this demo database is not gonna actually have anything settled because it's fake transactions. These settlements should match your batches now. Okay. So um, a few things I wanna note around that. Um, there are a few things that over the last few weeks, we uh, over the last week, we kind of cleaned up. I think the majority of that is cleaned up now. There are a few transactions that were still, if, you know, if you're seeing some transactions maybe impending that don't look right, do reach out to us. We, we're cleaning up the last few of those. Um, there's some, there was something around mission trip where um, the mission, there's several different ways mission trip donations can get put in. And one of the ways was creating a duplicate trend uh, contribution entry. Well, we've cleaned up the vast majority of those. There's a few that we're going through and kind of manually cleaning up for folks. Um, but if your batches match your deposit, you don't have to worry about that. That should, that you should be good there. If you, if you do have a few that aren't looking right or something like that, let us know. There's one other case where some things weren't looking right, which is, uh, text to give. If you're a church that's using the text to give integration, uh, text to give contributions for two or three days last week, were making it into the online batches. And so, we can help you move those into a text to give batch, which is the appropriate way and how that's handling now. Um, but that would be another reason why maybe one of your batches is not matching with your settlement report, which should match with your bank. That would have been the same for online giving as well. Yes. So if you're using online giving.org, we have a few churches that are using that. Um, there were two or three days where those were making it into your online, but that should be all straightened out and they should be going into their own batch type that is not online now. So online should be used exclusively for transactions that are processing through Touchpoint with one of our integrated payment processors. If you have a different integration, such as online giving, such as text to give, we have created a separate batch for those. If you have one that's not listed there, we would recommend you create a batch type for that. And you can simply go to the lookup codes and create any kind of batch types uh, so that when you import those, you can you can tag them with the associate uh, associated um, name. Okay, so um, reconciliation, fairly straightforward, fairly simple. So if I go here and I go to 8.1 to 8.31, it's, it's filtering by all of these transactions. I can now reconcile a whole month at one time. It's as simple as checking this box. 
and then clicking over here on the little drop down arrow and clicking on the report. Now, one thing I'll note, we've mentioned this on several of our past calls, we have several different variations of this report. So if you wanna read about the different variations, you can click here on the documentation and that is called the multi-batch. So if you type in multi-batch, we have the multi-batch report, multi-batch report two and multi-batch report three. What I'm working with and what I'm showing here is a version of the multi-batch report one, um, but I've, I've done a little bit of customization to it. What I've really done is I've removed a few columns just to, that I, I don't think are necessary. Um, but we add a lot of columns and it's pretty easy for you to remove those. If you need help from our support, just email our support. We're happy to help you uh, look at customizing or swapping one of these out, but it does give you detailed instructions. I know this is a little intimidating right here, looking at code, but we give you step-by-step -step instructions. It's just a copy and paste to copy that over. If you need our help, we're happy to do that. But the, the point is, if you don't like this version of the report that I'm showing, if you want one that has has the, da the data reported on it a different way, we can provide that for you fairly easily. So, um, so let me go back over to that report. And so what you're seeing here is all of these batches in one report. And at the top of this, I'm seeing a list of all my batches. And what I can do here is I can actually, some churches print this out or take a PDF and you could actually check off and make sure, do I have a deposit for each of these amounts in my bank for that period? So you can do all of those at one time in one simple report. Um, once that's confirmed, or maybe let's take an example where the you know some of these aren't showing in my bank yet. I could go back to that batch report and I could say, these aren't showing, so I'm not ready to reconcile those. I'm going to uncheck those and I'm going to rerun that report that now instead of having those bottom two batches in there, it's going to be short two more batches. And I know that these are all in my bank. And at the top, I've confirmed that all of these deposits match my bank. Well, at the bottom, this is the part that's really customizable is there's three different ways you can view this. The view that I'm looking at right now is organizing all of my totals per fund per day. So let me scroll down here to a day like the eighth where I'm seeing three different uh, funds. And so I have six transactions totaling $1,188.50, but here's the breakdown of those different funds. This is a really helpful report in terms of then taking that data from that, that we've confirmed. These are the funds that have been received by your processor. They match what's in your bank. And now this is how they should be recorded in your general ledger. If you record the detail of these funds, I believe that's batch multi-batch report two. If you don't record it by day and you just record a, a summary of all your funds across the whole period that you run, multi-batch report three is the one I think you want to look at there. So, and if you want to do some other variation, let us know. We'll, we can talk to you and see if there's uh, another way that we can run any of that. But basically this report gives you, and you'll notice the total here is all of my batches, uh, my settlement batches, $29,294.56. And when I scroll down to the bottom here, that matches exactly what it, the breakdown is of all of these different funds uh, by the various days. And so I can see that I have the 29,264.56, 64 items, and I can confirm that that matches here at the top. Uh, we've even added this really simple down, you know, export to Excel button here. So if you want to export that, you can click on that. It gives you a nice report that you can copy and paste from Excel. Uh, and this is one of the main ways that we can recommend that we would recommend reconciling things. There is another report that some churches use if, um, and you can do this kind of in two separate steps. Um, but let me show you, before I show you that and talk through that, I want to show you a few more features related to this page. So you'll notice here that all of these batches are marked as closed. And let's say I just reconciled all of those with my general ledger. One thing I might want to do after I've clicked and run that report, I've downloaded that Excel document, I've imported it in my general ledger, is I might want to go over here and mark all of these as reconciled. This is a new feature. You don't have to use this. You can continue to just use closed. But the benefit of this is if I mark all of these as reconciled now, you'll notice that now if I am filtering up here by just 
you know, if I wanted to see this date range and I wanted to see which ones have not been reconciled, let's say I just want to see the closed or open ones during that date range. Now, all those ones that have um, been reconciled are going to fall off the list. So I don't have the chance of accidentally reconciling two batch, a batch a second time. So it's up to you whether you want to use that or not. Again, it's a new thing. If you do use it, one helpful thing might be to actually go through um, and find, you know, take all of your closed batches. So filter here by closed and, and you know, you can not put in a date range here. So I'm going to actually just clear this. I'm going to do closed. And if you do that, you could go in here and you could check, you know, all the boxes here and you could just go and reconcile all of your past batches. It does take a few minutes. Notice I have 18 pages. So I have a, you know, a, at a hundred rows, that means I have uh, 1800 batches that I would have to do that with, but you can do it at a hundred at a time, or you can actually expand that to 200 at a time. And you can mark those, all those past ones that had already been reconciled, you can mark them as reconciled. So this is another kind of helpful tool to be able to sort your batches, know what's been reconciled, because there's a difference between opening, having something open, having something closed, and then reconciled is when it's actually, you know, it's been confirmed with the bank, you you know, you've confirmed it with your GL. And that is a nice, helpful step there to be able to mark that as reconciled. Up to you whether you use that, but we gave that as an optional tool. Um, and it will give you those totals as well here, um, based on your search criteria of what is open, closed, reconciled, and pending. So I'm going to clear that and you'll see um, you know, I have $41 million in here, 30 million of that is reconciled. I've got 10 million that's been closed, but I haven't marked as reconciled. And then I've got some open and pending ones that I st I'm still working with. So you can see right there at a snapshot of kind of where you are, what, what's still being worked through. Okay. Uh, another way of doing this, if you did want to separate this out is you could now reconcile your batches with your bank. And then if you want to actually report on giving based on the giving date and not worry about whether or not it's been settled or not, we still do have, and we this is we're not planning on removing this, um, this will be there, is the totals by fund report. So some changes that happen in phase one of the totals by fund is now you can click on tax deductible, non-tax deductible, non-contribution. If you wanted to just say, I wanna see online and I wanna see 9.1 to 9.30, you'll notice that uh, I guess I probably don't have any, oh, I don't have any unclosed. None of them are unclosed. So it's going to give me totals there. Know that these might not be reconciled, meaning they might not be settled. They might not, they might be in batches that are not reconciled, but you can report on it this way. And this will now include um, items that are non-contribution. So um the, in the past, this did not include non-contribution items. So event registration payments, those types of things uh, did not come through here. This will allow you to, to, to reconcile all of that at one point in one place. So you have a few options there, but this should be much easier. And again, the beauty of it too, is you can do it all in mass, meaning you can do multiple batches all at one time. Um, so I know that is a little bit of a change for some people. There were some people that were doing, you know, one batch for a whole week. Um, the, the challenge of that is that some, sometimes the cutoff means that, you know, it didn't exactly match your deposits. Now, if you still want to do one week at a time, you can just go in and put a date range of say the second through, uh, the eighth, that's going to give you, um, that full seven days. Uh, it looks like I don't have any batches in there that match this criteria, but you can still do a week at a time, but these will now match based on the deposits because the batches will match the deposits uh, from your processor. So let me talk about soft credits real quick, unless Mike, there's anything I've missed from a reconciliation standpoint, and I'm sure people have questions. So I'm gonna open it up for questions but I just want to cover soft credits really quick. Uh, soft credits is a new feature that we rolled out. Um, the way this 
is really intended to work is for things like business entities or foundations that give for donor advised funds. We typically a recommendation is to just put that donor advised fund tr- contribution on the person's record of the donor advised fund, but enter it as a non contribution uh, as a non tax deductible item. You can use this for donor advised funds as well for soft credits. And you could put the donor advised fund in there as the contributor. Um, However, because donor advised funds typically don't need a statement, we typically recommend just putting it on the donor's record and putting it in as a non-contribution. Businesses and foundations, however, typically do request or require a statement. Um, And so that's where the differentiator is, but it's up to you. If you want to put them all in as separate entities and use this soft credit, you can do it that way. It's up to you. Um, But the example here, if I wanted to do this, let me go in here to this batch. And I am going to add an entry here uh, for the Dolan Foundation. I don't have a foundation, but let's assume that I did. Uh, well, maybe that, maybe I don't have that in this database. Let's see. I think, uh, I'm going to do a different one. Whitworth. Oh, maybe I, maybe I don't have any of these. There we go. Whitworth Enterprises. Sorry about that. So let's say Whitworth Enterprises sends in a check for a thousand dollars. Um, that is tax deductible for the Whitworth Enterprises. And so that's the proper way to record this. But let's say that I want Uh, Will Whitworth to get credit for that gift on his pledge. I can click check this box to use soft credit. You'll notice that Will's name is automatically checked there. And that is because, or automatically in there, that's because I've already associated a gift from Whitworth Enterprises to Will Whitworth. Um, If indeed it wasn't Will and it was, let's say it was Haley Whitworth, I could search here and I could find Haley. And then next time the drop down will actually show both names. Uh, I'm going to keep it associated with Will, but all I have to do is click save on that. Uh, one thing you'll notice here is that there's a there's a blue dot that shows on next to any contribution entry, uh, batch entry that has a uh, a soft credit on there. And now that soft credit will uh, reduce Will's pledge amount if Will has a pledge. So, and it has the possibility... Uh, it does show in a separate section on Will's um, giving tab, and you have the ability, if you're using the default statement, there's a new s- section on the statement for soft credits. If you don't want to show that, um, there's documentation for how to remove soft credits from the statement. If you're using a custom statement, you will need to go add that, and there's documentation for where and how to add those different sections if you're using soft credits. It's very easy. It's two blocks of code that you just have to copy into the correct place on the statement. If you need help, our support team is there to help. So that is how soft credits work. Um, And I believe that covers the majority, if not all of the changes in phase two. Um, A few things I wanted to mention that we have changed over the last week. Some of these even just rolled out this last night is that... uh, Some people have asked, well, I can't make edits to online contributions. That was intentional. We did lock it down a little bit more than we ended up deciding on. So what we've done is that while something is pending, you'll notice that you are only able to edit certain fields. So you can't edit the amount and the date because we want those to be able to still be tracked to the appropriate transactions so that they can properly settle. But once they have settled... You can now, we've now made it, uh, well, that's a closed batch, so I can't change anything, but let me, oh, this one's closed too. So I'll just reopen reopen one. Yeah, I I got it. You'll notice now we are giving you the ability to make changes to this. So if you want to to make a split, you can go in there and make a split. If you need to delete something, uh, you can do that. Um, this is, these changes are tracked in the change log. So that's why we decided to kind of let you do this, but ideally you would not need to, or you shouldn't be making changes to online contributions because there's really not many needs to, or reasons to do that. But there's sometimes somebody might call and say, Hey, I made a gift for a thousand dollars to the general fund. I meant that for that to be 500 to the general and 500 to the building fund. You can now go in and adjust that behind the scenes. 
Maybe it's, you know, got associated with the wrong donor. That's a very rare case. But if you needed to do that, you could, you could reassociate that. Um, or if there's any other things you need to change, you, te you technically can do that now. Um, but there should be very few reasons that you would need to edit an online, uh, online contribution entry. And, and beware that if you delete an entry or change the amount of an entry, then that batch probably will not match your bank deposit anymore. Correct. Yeah. The other thing is, um, depending on which payment processor you use. So with Touchpoint Giving, we've been able to do a little bit deeper of an integration than what we were able to do with some of the others. And so things like if you have an ACH that has an insufficient funds, we can pull in that, that uh, negative amount to offset the positive one. If there are refunds or voids or insufficient funds or things like that, you can go in and make adjustments within that batch now to make sure that they settle uh, and match your bank deposits. So that is one of the reasons why we did that is if you are using one of the other payment processors, you might need to go in and make some adjustments. If you're using Touchpoint Giving, we've tried to take care of all of that automatically for you so that it's not an issue. So, all right. I think we covered a lot. I'm going to stop sharing my screen, open up the chat here. Let's see what kind of questions have come in. Um, it looks like we've got one. The date range that's being used is a settlement date or it's the bank's date, which is sometimes different. So it's the settlement date. Um, I think Danny already answered that. So we don't know when the de funds deposit. We know when the bank de settled the transactions. That's all they tell us. Um, some processors deposit them almost immediately. Some take a day or two. Um, it's We don't know that information. All we know is when it settles. So we are putting the settlement date in as the deposit date. Uh, on the batch page, will there be a dropdown available for gateways? So that is a good question. We we are, um, it's something we've discussed. It shouldn't be necessary because um, there's a unique uh, settle, uh, reference ID for each of the batches. Um, and the vast majority of our churches are just using one gateway, but we do have several churches that are using two or more. Um, I think the most we have is a church using four different, four or five different gateways, which is possible if you have multiple locations or different uh, nonprofits or something that are a part of you. Um, it's something we're, you know, looking at and evaluating right now based on the feedback is we've kind of pulled churches. It doesn't seem necessary, uh, but Ellen, I do see that where it's something we will, you know, continue to evaluate and look at. Um, when will the batch reports print the fund code? So the batch reports print the fund code. Um, if you're referring to the multi-batch report, um, I might need whoever that is to unmute themselves and clarify here. Uh, it does print the, the account code in there. So if Can I hear me? Yes. Yeah, if you go back to the batch, the, the green page you're on where you balanced and unbalanced. Yes. We, we not not that one. Let me just open up a batch there. No. Yeah, so so the fun code right there, it shows up, but when you print it, I get nothing. It doesn't the like memorials, general fund does not carry through when I print that page. Oh, so you're printing. I this reported this already page. and they said they were working on a fix. That was like four weeks, four, maybe five weeks ago. I haven't heard anything. So We're what, still working on that. For the individual, not not the total. I yep. get it on the total, but not for the individual. So we have a version of this. It's more of a printer friendly version that we would recommend. So under here, right. you can click you on report. Yeah. So under here, you can click on report and there's a printer friendly version that actually will show all of that uh, in there. So seven ten. Another step to point a volunteer to. Okay. <laughs> yeah, th this is typically kind of the printer friendly version, and we have different versions of this where there's actually like si you can put signature lines on here and various things if you want. Uh, I was not aware of that. Okay, thank you. That's that's what we would recommend because this is really a web view that doesn't print 
perfectly. Um, so we, we would, we don't recommend printing this page. Um, we recommend printing the, the actual report that has the better data on it. So great question. Um, all right. If we use our payment processor for more than one platform, can we still be able to settle correct? Uh, so great question, Amy. If you are using the same gateway for Touchpoint and for another, then you're you're going to have to add the deposit the items from Touchpoint and the items from that other um, system. Our recommendation in that case would be to actually have two different uh, gateway, one gateway account, but two different kind of merchant or mid-level accounts within that so that you don't have to add those and, and match them. So that would be our recommendation. You can certainly co-mingle them. Some churches do some offline payments through their the web portal of their payment processor. You can do that. It just is going to make it a potentially an extra step for you all in that reconciliation process if you do that. Uh, on the batch summary report, uh, can we get the account numbers back? Um, so, but it's only showing the fund name now. So James, uh, our, James Harding, are you talking about on this page as well and that report that I was just showing you, you want to actually see the numbers instead of the names of the fund here? Yes, sir. Okay. Mike, uh, that should be possible, right? Sorry, I thought I was sharing my screen. We can update this report to actually show the account numbers here, right? We have a version of that that does that. Yeah, we can certainly do that. Uh, it's a okay. different matter if, if they're wanted on the batches page itself. Yeah, on the bat, on the, batches page itself it's going to show um uh there's there's not the ability to fully customize that but it shows so if i change this to a non contribution when you go down here it's going to show you the number and the name and it, and it allows you to search by that um but on the report that you may print or get a pdf of or something for your records we can we can customize that so yeah, it's um, just on the report page, the actual summary page, because we send that to our accounting firm so that they can update it. Great. Yeah, we can. Um, that report that is pulling from here is called the, uh, it's just called the batch report instead of the multi-batch report. So if you go to support and you go to the batch report, there are three different versions of that as well. And I believe we actually have one that has the, the fund numbers on there. Uh, this just has the fund names, but if if it's not in one of these three examples, we can we can get that very easily. Yep. All right. Registration income now on the batch summary, it shows non-contribution for the registration income, but it isn't indicating the fund for each entity. The settlement report still shows what fund the income came into, but the batch summary doesn't show that. So James, I think that that might be because you, it, you're you probably, we've updated the batch reports. If you are using a customized batch report, then it w isn't gonna pull in the new account code. Uh, if you use one of the ones that we are showing you, it will pull in where it's a non-contribution, it will pull in the account code in there. And so if you update to one of the three that I was showing you, that is addressed there. Um, and if you need help further customizing that, uh, just reach out to um, Mike or myself or support and we, we can help you get that taken care of. Awesome, thank you. Yep. Um, will there be a way to void a same day transaction in the pending batch? Um, so phase three is going to um, address and kind of clean up the way some of the voiding and refunds and all of that is done. And unfortunately, Nathan, I don't have a complete answer for you on that. So there will be a way to do a void or refund on a same day. And I it will depend on your payment processor in terms of what you might have to go in and either 
do something to that um to that batch and i were still working through how voids and transactions there's several different payment processes they all kind of work slightly different so i don't know the answer right off the top of my head yet but we will provide when phase three rolls out we will provide clear instructions for if you're on this payment processor these are the steps you need to do we're going to automate as much of that as we can but again some of the payment processors work different and we don't have full control over it so we'll do what we can to make that as easy as possible um, but we will provide clear documentation when phase three rolls out on that. All right. Um, is there a report that shows contribution paid to a pledge versus contributions not paid to a pledge after you've done the reconciliation at the end of the month? There is a way that you can do that, I believe, if this answers your question. And um, I'll show you this. So Maria, if you're still on and listening, if you want to unmute yourself, I'm happy to show you this. So Thank we you. have a uh, under finance here under search, we have this pledges page and you can um, sort by the given date range. So if I wanted to see all of my amounts given in the month of August, I could do that here. Um, and it's going to recalculate these totals based on that. So you notice that those just changed. And so, right. um, what I don't know is, I don't know if that kind of answers exactly what you're looking for. Um, it's possible that maybe the pledge totals by fund might cover what you're looking for. I, that might be one. Um, Mike, do you know any better answers on that one? I don't, um, well, we, we still do have the pledge fulfillment report, which would also show um, amounts given toward pledges. And if somebody hadn't pledged, amounts given uh, to that fund. Yes. So if you go to a fund and let's say the building fund, you can download that pledge fulfillment report. Uh, I'm going to open that up. And what you'll see on that is this is the um, pledge amount. Here's the total given and the balance. And so you'll see down here, these are people that gave. So this person gave $17,750 to uh, to this fund, but they didn't make a pledge. And so this this pledge fulfillment report might accomplish uh, what you're looking for there. If it if any of the combination of those three don't uh, follow up with us, we can we can or stay on and we can talk through more specifics of exactly what you're looking for there. Okay, thank you. And you can set date ranges on those reports. And if I want to look just at August, it'll tell me what was paid to a pledge in August. On the new pledge search page, so this is a new page that rolled out in phase one, you can put in and it will filter the actual gifts that were given during that period. Um, and the pledge and, and also the pledges so if you only wanted to look at pledges up through you know july and you didn't want any august and september pledges in there you could put a july date in there to see um you know based on the pledges as of a certain date um this should accomplish what you're looking for but this this is not i don't think this page is going to look at well it will it'll it'll filter these numbers like the total not to a pledge so meaning this is, um, but you're not going to see the detail breakout down here. This is only going to show the detail of the pledges. That's right. This is going to show you the amount given not to a pledge uh, okay. based, based on these filters up here. All right. Okay. That I'll, we'll look at all three, all four of those and see if they help us. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Absolutely. All right. On the batch page, after scanning and checks, if we select a non-tax deductible fund, is there a way to make the contribution type automatically change from tax deductible to non-tax deductible? So um, that is an interesting question. And so we we do support non this concept of a non-tax deductible fund, but really I think it's kind of a, we do it because Zach, I believe you all are using kind of a different giving platform and some there's some giving platforms that just do things that 
maybe I would consider not standard. Um, typically you would have a non contract you would typically, if it's a gift, then it would be a gift to a fund and it's either a tax deductible or non-tax deductible. And the fund is just a giving fund. If it's, if it's something like an event payment, then that's not a fund. That's an account code, like a program income. And we consider that a non-contribution. And so it, I think what you're maybe trying to do here and feel free to chime in is if you're say recording a check for something for maybe a, a uh, men's retreat, let's say somebody sends in a check for $180 to a men's retreat. We would not consider that a, a tax. We would not consider that a gift to a non-tax deductible fund. We would consider that a non-contribution and it would go to an account code. Um, and so there's just slightly kind of different terminologies around how different systems use it. And I think you're kind of taking a round peg and putting in a square hole or maybe a square peg and putting it around. I'm, I'm not sure, but it's kind of, they don't completely line up here. So there might just be, we might need to just take this offline, Zach, and, and talk through, there might be some other ways that we could handle that. And, and our recommendation would probably be to either make that to a, a, um, a non-contribution to an account code. Um, but we're ha happy to take, if you want to stay on, we can talk through that and, and, and deal with some of the specifics around how exactly what you're doing, if you'd like. Okay. Um, are we going to be able to enter cash and check totals separately when creating a batch? Currently it only shows for a combined total when you create batches. So, um, the way we do it now, is to try to, uh, where am I here? So let me go here to a batch. And I'm just gonna do a mail check in cash because that's typically where you would probably put in, you know, checks in cash. Um, when you're creating this, it's asking you for your estimated amount. And we don't break out the cash versus checks here um we we just ask for the total amount and that is based on some feedback just to simplify this we want to know that the total amount matches and the total item count matches Chris, you, are you supposed to be sharing your screen i'm sorry i thought i was thank you dania for for that so uh here i'm on a batch and when you're creating a batch it's going to pull up this page where you're putting in the estimated amount and the estimated count okay and this is because we we just want the total amount and the total count to match at the end of the at the end to make sure that they're balanced. Previously, you had to put in the estimated checks and the estimated cash and the estimated coin, and we got a lot of feedback that that was just way more cumbersome than what was necessary. And a lot of people were just putting everything in one kind of total amount. We do still break this out if you want to see those totals to match them, and so on this page to simplify it, we're just asking for the estimated amount. But if you want to see the breakdown of what is cash versus check, uh, the way this works is if you put in a check number in here, you'll notice that now these are counted as checks and see that how that updated in real time. And so this is going to give you the breakdown of I have 2,300 and 1,000, that's 3,300 as checks, and I have 1,300 as cash. And so we are still getting those, those amounts if you want to further, you know, confirm, do I have the correct cash? Do I have the correct checks amount? But for the sake of kind of balancing the batch at the end of the day, we've just, we've, we've decided based on a lot of feedback from many people on this call to just simplify that and make it, make it match the total amount and the total count of items. All right, I think I got through all of the questions here. Happy to stay on if there's anything I didn't cover or if you have specific things that you wanna dive into. Um, again, this is hopefully our goal, our goal and our heart in this really, we, you know, the system worked before. Uh, we, we decided to do this because we saw ways that we could make this easier and save you all time. And so um, I've talked to a number of you all one-on-one -on -one, answered some emails. Um, I think there was, there's some change that's happened that is hard, but I think that at the end of the day, this should make the, your process much easier and should save a number of steps in that process. That's our goal. If that's not the case, 
do reach out to us. We can talk through some specifics, but I think a lot of it's going to be boiled down to, are you using the correct report? Can we get you a new or different or better report? Uh, are you using some of those new features around on the, you know, particularly on the batch search page where you can filter and do multiple batches all at one time? Um, that That is going to have a vast improvement in terms of the amount of time versus reconciling each thing one at a time. And so our goal is that this has done that. And we've heard from many of you and talked to many of you individually that that is happening. So if that's not the case, please let us know because we, you know, our goal is to help you do your job easier so that you can spend more time focusing on other things. Because we know everybody on this call is so busy and has so much going on. And churches, unfortunately, I, I worked on a church staff for 15 years. We have limited resources and we want you um, being as efficient as possible. And and uh, and so that's the goal of all of what we've done here. So uh, if there's any ways we can help, let us know. Um, for the sake of time, I'm going to kind of end the call. But if anybody wants to stay on, I'm going to stop the recording right now. If, if uh, you want to stay on, happy to stay on and answer any specific questions. But I'll let everybody go and uh, give you back 11 minutes in your day. So have a great day. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Thanks. All right. Thanks for letting us know, James. It looks like the batch report two solved all your items there. That's great.